whether it is an emergency or a planned procedure, getting a tracheostomy tube can be a scary experience. There are many questions which may arise, such as, what will the procedure be like? What should I expect during the recovery process? Will I be able to speak after getting a tracheostomy tube, etc.? Join me this week as I discuss what to expect when getting a tracheostomy tube, and I will answer some of the most commonly asked questions about getting a tracheostomy. There are two ways a tracheostomy tube can be inserted. First, there is the bedside procedure. The medical team will do the tracheostomy procedure at the bedside. This is often done on patients who are intubated and who are in the intensive care unit. Contraindications for this procedure may include children under the age of 12, obesity, and patients with blood clotting issues. The second way a tracheostomy tube can be inserted is via surgery. The procedure is done in an operating room. The patient is given general anesthesia. A breathing tube is placed down the patient's throat and then the tracheostomy procedure is performed. Both procedures have pros and cons. Talk to your medical provider before getting a tracheostomy to ask which procedure he's planning to perform and to discuss any possible contraindications. Getting a tracheostomy tube is a relatively painless procedure. You will feel some discomfort at the tracheostomy insertion site and will also have to adjust to having a piece of plastic in your airways. But of all the medical procedures I have had, I would rate getting a tracheostomy as a two out of 10 on a pain scale with 10 being the worst pain possible. During the first three to seven days, the cuff on the tracheostomy tube will be inflated. This ensures the tracheostomy site heals and the tracheostomy tube does not move around. While the cuff is inflated, the patient will not be able to speak. Please prepare for this challenge. To communicate, language boards can be used. The patient can point to an activity or phrase on the language board to communicate his wishes. Also, an electronic device such as a tablet or computer can be used to have the patient type out responses and questions. The tracheostomy tube used when a person undergoes a tracheostomy procedure is a rigid plastic tube. This tube is not flexible and has a big bulky cuff. This will make speaking and swallowing very difficult. The tracheostomy tube will remain in place for about one month. When you follow up with your medical provider, he or she will most likely do your first tracheostomy tube exchange. If the patient wishes to switch to a less bulky tracheostomy tube, this may be done during the first tracheostomy tube exchange. If you wish to switch to a different tracheostomy tube, Please express your desire to your medical provider before your appointment, as a different tracheostomy tube may need to be ordered. The least bulky tracheostomy tube is made from silicone by a company called Bivona. If you do not need a cuff tracheostomy tube, at your first tracheostomy tube exchange, your tracheostomy tube will most likely be switched out to a cuffless tracheostomy tube. If you do not know if you will need a cuffed or a cuffless tracheostomy tube, please address this with your medical provider. Anytime the cuff on the tracheostomy tube is inflated, swallowing will be difficult because the patient will have to exert extra muscle power to force food around the tracheostomy tube cuff. After surgery, the patient will most likely have a nasogastric feeding tube inserted to receive nutrition. Two to seven days after surgery, a swallow challenge may be initiated. 
This will evaluate the patient's ability to swallow. If the patient is able to swallow, the feeding tube will be removed and the patient will be allowed to eat by mouth. If the patient does not pass the swallowing test, the feeding tube will remain in place. While the tracheostomy site is healing, the cuff on the tracheostomy tube will remain inflated. This will prevent the patient from speaking. Once the cuff on the tracheostomy tube is allowed to be deflated, the patient can practice speaking. I will warn you, speaking will take time and for some, speaking will not be regained. The ability to speak may be lost due to several factors. First, any time a breathing tube is inserted into the airways, it is passed through the vocal cords. There is always a chance the vocal cords may be damaged by the breathing tube. This damage may be temporary or permanent. Second, depending on the reason for getting a tracheostomy tube, it is possible the patient's underlying health condition has damaged or destroyed the muscles or nerves needed to create speech. If the patient was not able to speak before getting a tracheostomy tube, he will not be able to speak after getting a tracheostomy tube. Third, speaking with the tracheostomy tube requires the body to relearn how to speak. Different muscles and breathing techniques need to be employed. Some patients are not able to develop these new skills due to cognitive, nerve, or muscle issues. If this is the case, the patient will not be able to speak after getting a tracheostomy tube. Fourth, there is always the slim possibility the tracheostomy procedure may cause nerve damage. The damaged nerve may impede the patient's ability to speak. Regaining the ability to speak will be a slow process. It took me about two weeks to speak words. A month after getting the tracheostomy, my ability to speak dramatically increased when I was able to have my original tracheostomy tube change to a silicone bivona. After getting a tracheostomy tube with a smaller cuff, I was able to speak in sentences. Before leaving the hospital, either a nurse or the patient's medical equipment company should provide a tutorial on how to care for the tracheostomy tube. A lot of information will be conveyed during this session. It may seem overwhelming. To help retain the information, video record the session. This will allow the patient and or the caregiver to review the tutorial at a later time. When you first get a tracheostomy tube, your airways will produce a lot of mucus. You will need to keep the airways clear to prevent the tracheostomy tube from becoming plugged. A device which can help get rid of mucus accumulation is a suction machine. This machine uses a catheter and goes down into the airways and sucks up mucus. For more information about using a suction machine, please see the video, Suctioning 101 essential info and tips. Using a nebulizer can also help loosen up mucus and will make it easier to suction or cough up the mucus. For more information about using a nebulizer, please see the video, have a nebulizer? Info you need to know. I hope this video has helped provide insight into what it is like to undergo a tracheostomy tube procedure. If you would like more information about having a tracheostomy tube and using a ventilator, please see the video, have a trach and vent, info you need to know. Also, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact me. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Bye-bye.